Hey there, just before you jump onto this webinar, make sure you click the subscribe button and also click the bell icon so that you're notified of all future trainings. Now let's get into this one. Yeah, so Jen and I have been working on whiteboarding this, figuring out exactly the best way, the best approach to conquer this big curriculum programming that everyone has, has been requesting for the past year. So I'm just going to go through initially with the PowerPoint presentation, uh, but most of this will be uh, hands-on demo on the actual platform that we've built. Okay, so initially to get, get it all started, I wanted to just discuss exactly what the existing programming that we have and how, how it's, it's really helped owner um, build something to start off with for most of the centers that we have now. And it, it, it's been precisely built to cater for the requirements, but throughout the recent years, um, a lot of the centers that we've gotten on board, they've got different ways of running things. And so we've gotten to a point now where I think it's time that we create something completely new for you guys. So with the custom programming, uh, back in, uh, in March, when we had our own uh, um, seminar, we kind of give you guys, gave you guys a glimpse of what we were planning on building and handed out pieces of paper to some of the centers and gave us some ideas of how you guys actually build your programs. And that was very, very, very helpful for us to have. Um, and so we listened to what you guys are creating. And so we built something very flexible for you guys to use. And, and the same goes with the learning docs. If you guys already use learning docs in the platform, we've built templates to make it a lot easier for you guys to build the custom program. So you guys won't be creating anything from scratch. And I re really prefer that you guys don't create anything from scratch because this will save you guys a lot of time using the templates. And most of the that, um, this webinar, I'll be going through it with the, in the program as a demo. And I'll go through the full life cycle of what we've built in terms of creating templates and building your program against templates and also linking posts, learning documents against each one of these programs and also experiences. And finally, you get to see how the parents are able to now provide feedback against each one of these experiences inside your program. And at the end, uh, we'll allocate 10, 15 minutes. If hopefully, if, if we do go over, over the time of one hour, uh, apologies, but um, I, I want to get through as much as we can. And also I want to answer all your questions or of anything that you guys um, have anything important. Uh, to me, a lot of the questions that you have now are any uh, feedback. Uh, I'm going to take that in to make sure that if there's anything in there that we can include before the final release of the product towards the end of the month. Um, that if there's anything there that I, I find that will be beneficial, we'll try and include it. All right, so with the current programming now, um, you go, if you guys already use it, you know there's a, there's a lot of things that's um, happening in this form. There's over 40 fields in this form, and majority of the centers now find that it's very limiting, okay? So you have this single block where there's only got one column here, on the where it says Monday it gets converted into a single block called experience or a weekly block, which is what we got here. Again, this is very limiting to most of the centers now that are starting to use um, our programming, uh, but it, it does still work. So if you were to module the way your center work to this program, it does work, but we prefer that you guys um, build, build your programs to the way you want to run, uh, how your centers run. And majority of the text in here may not conform to the languages that your centers use. Let me just minimize this. And with, with that, um, it, it's hard to for you guys to build a program and train your staff and figuring out with what some of these fields mean and trans, translating that to how your centers run. So it's it beneficial for us to be able to customize that. And as you know, there's R40 odd so fields in this form, and it could be too many, or it could be not enough. There could be some fields in there that you guys are actually missing that um, we may have created custom, um, we may have custom 
fields in there that we've added for you on this static form, but we, we're not, be able to, not gonna be able to cater for all of the centers that we have now. So within the categories section in here, this is probably the heart and soul of the program. So I'll find that um, majority of the requests was each one of these boxes where you put in your experiences and evaluation, it doesn't correctly capture the children that you've, added, you've done this evaluation or you've done, you've worked on throughout this um, experience. And at the same time, parents don't know what days or which experiences their children belongs to. So they could be tagged in a room, but they, they don't know that the children actually participated in that. So they could look at a program on the app and go, okay, my kid was part of this program, but when they speak to the staff, they weren't actually a part of that. So the new programming will um, fix that issue. And also with posts that gets created. So when, when it comes to presenting the programs to either your staff management or center management, or even auditors, you, you weren't able to correctly display which experiences or which children belongs to which post that you've created, because you could have a program that you've created 40 odd posts for, and th there's no way of um, differentiating between which post belongs to which experiences that occurred in here. So that's one of the other issues that we try to solve. Um, Jen, do you have any additional input on issues or pain points that you've heard from centres? Um, I think you've pretty much covered a lot of it where um, the fields aren't able to be edited and the language that each service uses is different, as well as the ability to link children to certain um, experiences or um, certain things that they're wanting to put on the program for those children. So, yeah, they're the big main uh, pain points that most feedback that we've received. So, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, just one request. So from for everyone, uh, if, if you guys could just put into the chat your top pain point with the existing program if you're actually using it. And I wouldn't mind collecting that towards the end and even try and go through them um, during the Q&A if, if we've got time. But this will give me an idea of where you guys are at in terms of, I know, I know there could be more, more than one pain point with the existing program, but uh, we probably won't be able to get through that with the amount of people that we have on this um, webinar. So if you can just your number one, your top one, that would be great. And uh, we'll get Chris to collect them and share that with me towards the end. All right, so with our new custom programming, what can we do? What can you do with it? So with, if, if you guys have used our learning docs already, uh, it's exactly the same um, builder. So you'd be able to customize how each, how the fields look, how much um, information you wanna, display and you can see in here it's exactly the same except that the programming templates have different fields so they'll have majority of what the learning docs have uh, like the frameworks and all the other text boxes but there'll be a programming matrix that's added in there which i'll go through more in detail during the demo so each one of these fields again will correlate to within the builder and to what you fill in when you're creating a new program. And what this gives you is a full customizability of what type of fields, whether they're text boxes or text areas, and you'll be able to customize your language on how um, your, your centers name different types of fields and, and an explanation on what they are. Uh, the key part of the new template is this thing called the matrix builder. So it's this section here. And what it creates is your ability to create your own different rows and columns. And also each one of these boxes called experiences, you'll be able to customize each one of them as well. So you can see here, I've got different days and on another image I could have, I call it indoor and outdoor. But each one of these rows are still called categories and they're still part of your categories listing. So, but we've kind of removed the, the categories from the old, uh, design where you have to pick different categories because it was a bit limiting. So now you can add multiple categories of the same type. So you could put cooking in twice and have different um, experiences for both of them. I'll go through that as well in the demo. 
Um, so with all of the labels, again, the customizability of what you can see here, you've got your labels, help text and placeholders. So the language that you guys use in your center, you'd be able to use that. And uh, when staff are actually filling it in, they'll be able to read through any of the placeholders or any help text and assist them in filling them out correctly. Uh, there's also a field in here called required. So if you wanted to make any of these fields mandatory, so when they're adding in a new program, for example, that all of the fields that's required, for example, title is filled in correctly and that they don't leave anything out. Uh, there's, there's a lot more customization in programming compared to learning docs in terms of what, what you see because the programming is, is very, very uh, uh, tied heavily to turning things on and off because there's a lot of different views and I'll show you all that during the demo. And any fields that you don't need, you can just remove them. Um, there, there is a X that you can click on the top right here uh, to remove them, or you can drag different fields in if you need additional frameworks, for example, you can add them all in. And hiding and showing fields, I'll get go through this in a bit more in depth in the demo. But basically in here, if, if you wanted to show different fields and their values to the parents, so when they look at it, at the, pro the program in the app, they'll be able to see, for example, the title, or if you wanted to turn on the children, they'll be able to see which children, that's, if, if um, their children was tagged, they'll be able to see the name of their child appear on the experience. And also the sharing across groups. So if you have multiple centers, uh, you can have one center build out the main template for all of your centers and click on the share with group and that will standardize all of your programs layout for across all of your different centers so it makes it easier to create them if um if it's managed centrally by one um head center and again as you've used learning docs before the customization is just endless you can go from having only a 10 field custom program up to a 50 fields custom program. So there's so much customization you can do, uh, but it, it's, it's up to you how you guys make it fit with how your centers run. So within the programming um, design, so the fields, uh, again, it's still the same as what it was in learning docs. You can see that a lot of the, um, the title status description, it's exactly the same as what you guys have used with the learning docs. So there should be some familiarization how it all works. So with creating programming templates, you wouldn't normally create them from scratch. So there's always gonna be these two blue ones that are showing up on the top right that you can click on and they are our templates. Uh, and inside every programming template, there's the programming matrix. So the matrix itself, which is this one here, your, your programming, your custom program must have at least one. You can't actually, it has to have only one. You can't have two matrices in it. So, and if you did try to add one, or if you didn't have one, if you created a program from scratch, it'll tell you that there's something wrong with your program and that it's missing a matrix. And that matrix, once you're filling out the program, this is what it could look like. And I'll go through that during the demo and you can see how customizable this is. So right down from the rows, you can add them in and customize the colors and also the columns. So you can have unlimited columns and unlimited rows. And each one of these pluses, they're called experiences, and you can customize the template for each one of them. Okay. Um, once you've created a program, you'd be able to view it uh, in two modes. You got the summary view, which will give you the details of your entire program, all the experiences been listed, um, any other information like parent feedback, post images, excuse me, and also any stats. For example, if there's any EYLF or MTOP that's been tagged, there'll be a graph displayed at the bottom here. Uh, so the second view is the print preview. So this is what you would normally print out and display on a um, board in your, uh, in your center. Uh, again, the colors are there to customize within each one, and that will also display uh, when um, you print it out. So like I said before, same with learning docs, 
there are templates that are pre-built for you guys. So I wouldn't um, want you guys to be creating anything from scratch because it does take a long time to get right. And also there are certain fields that do map to our database to make it backwards compatible with the app and also with, um, with the portal. So with, if you did create one from scratch, um, you'd have to make sure that the field in here, like the title, um, quick commencing rooms and the educators, they're, they're are created and mapped properly because there's a field map value that needs to map to our database. So if you did create one from scratch, it may not work if those um, certain fields aren't built in. That's why we've created the template. And if you did use the template, you can just remove and add things that you don't need. That should make it um, simpler as well. So this is the uh, pre-built um, program template. And we've also got the learning experience. So this is what um, the template would look like inside each one of those cells in the matrix. Uh, so you can customize them from to have a lot more frameworks than what I've got listed here, or you can have pretty much a simple one, like just have a title experience and evaluation if there's no other information that you need from there. So the customization there is up to you. All right, so I'm gonna jump into the program now. Um, just give me one tick. I'm gonna grab a drink. All right, so once we release this new uh, system, uh, the platform will have two new template section on the left side, you've got the programming template, which is your overall program and also the experience templates. These are each one of these cells and I'll go and create them from scratch uh, as well. And I'll show you how it all works. So currently what you guys would normally do is add programs and this is what it would currently look like. So this is your existing program. So if it was a weekly template, you'd normally pick out your categories and interests and it creates your matrix in here. And this, you're, pro you're pretty much limited to just these evaluation text boxes, uh, these experiences, I think they're called. And all the fields in here, uh, once you hit add program or save as draft, there's, there are additional fields that gets displayed. So if I look at one that I've created earlier on. So this is what a standard template would look like. Okay, so these are all the additional fields. A lot of these, you may not even need, uh, but you're pretty much, uh, if you're using the standard uh, program, you're, you're stuck with what's there. So you don't need to fill them in. That's why they're all not mandatory. And, and most of the fields in there, um, I think you guys try and fill in and make it fit and mold it to how your centers run. But uh, it, it may it may not be enough for what you guys need. So from what we've built in here, so if I go to view program, I've got I want to quickly show you guys a custom one that I've created. Uh, it's called Child's Play. So this is what it looks like as a whole. So I've got all the information that I've filled out here. These are all the different experiences that I've filled in, and they've all been marked as complete and any images attached to them. So all the information in the summary view, you can customize. So if there's way too much information in here, I can just untick them in the editor and say, I don't wanna show the images in any of my, um, in the summary view. So that way it's the, this display isn't cluttered. So if you wanted to only display the title, date, and the experience and evaluation, you can do that. Uh, but by default, uh, we picked out the ones that kind of makes sense to display on there. And these are some of the additional fields that's been listed out in the form that you can also customize. So if there's too much, if, um, too many fields in here, you can just remove them if you, if you don't, if your centers don't use them. Um, additional uh, information in here is your parent feedback. So if a parent has logged into the app and they've um, looked at any of the experiences and the feedback, that you'd be able to see them here. Uh, you've got your summary. I think you've got seen this. The original one has got this one as well. And the images that's been attached to any post and any experiences gets displayed here. And the only um, other change in here that you that you guys would really like 
is now you can filter any of these posts by their experience. So if any of these posts, uh, you've created a learning doc or an, a new post against this experience, you can filter by that. So this will only show you which um, post relates to that experience. So that helps you guys out if you're training someone or you're a center management and you want to walk through on how a staff has gone with the, with the program, you can filter down to the experience that they were working on and uh, be able to go back to each one of the posts that they've created. So that's just a, a quick overview of what the summary is. Uh, and the additional one in here is the program only print. So this is what it would look like when you try and print them. Again, pretty much the same as what it was, uh, what the functionality what you had with this, the current one, uh, but now you can customize the colors and the content that goes inside the print. So if you wanted to add other information in there, for example, children's names, which you probably wouldn't want to do since this gets printed and posted onto the board, but you can do that now. So it's up to you on what you guys want to display in each one of these fields. All right, so creating a completely brand new programming. So you first should start off with in the programming template. So this is where I'd create um, how my entire temp, my whole program is going to look like. So click on the plus, create a new one, and we will call this open our program. Oops. Fat fingers. Make this active. What? Okay, so I'll do, I'll pick weekly program. The weekly program and the single block program, they're identical. So the only key differences between them is the matrix has um, these values in here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, week, which you can actually customize. So if you wanted to have your columns to be, not, not have Monday to Friday, and you want to call it day one, uh, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Then you can do that. And the single block, pretty much the only thing it has in here in the columns um, text box is experience. So in, in reality, you could use a single block for everything and just customize the columns in here. So now when I um, create this, and go to add a program. And I pick webinar program. Oh, let's refresh. But all my scripts are loading properly. Uh, webinar. Calendar is not rendering properly. And we go through it this way. Okay. All right, so now the matrix in here has got day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. And if you wanted to customize this for you, uh, one of the day six, but the template didn't have it, you can just click on the plus and add it. So if you wanted day six in here, um, any additional uh, description is optional. Let's say, uh, Again, event. Okay. So you can customize each one of these by clicking. If you wanted to move them around, you can do that as well. If you wanted to start off on day uh, day six and work down backwards to day one. So that's um, all customizable there as well. So with each one of these um, columns, if you wanted to get rid of them, or if you wanted to edit them, just click on it, and you'd have the ability to delete or update the name and description. And dragging is all you have to do is to move them around. All right. Um, I'm not going to go into full detail of each one of these fields. Um, I think you've seen them with the existing program at the moment. Uh, but in terms of the customization, you'll notice in here that 
uh, not all the fields show up, okay? In the program itself, when you're editing it, there is a value called show and edit only. It means that if I'm creating a new curriculum program, I don't have to fill them out. I don't get to see them until I hit save as draft. It's exactly the same functionality as the existing program now. So that way you don't get inundated with 40 fields to look at. You've only got the fields that are actually important to getting started with creating a program. So in this case here, I normally would just put in a title um, webinar program. And that starts today. And all right, with the rooms, the only thing different here is you can now specify which rooms instead of one room or all rooms in the in the current programming. So with the custom one, you can say I want these three rooms. So now um, all three rooms will now uh, any children tagged in any of these rooms will now get to see it on the app for the parents. Okay, so by um, default, these are the only fields with the star are the mandatory fields. So I could click save as drop now. And now the rest of the fields that you can fill in would show up. So these are the fields that has been marked as show and edit in your editor. So show and edit only. So that way, um, if, if you wanted to show, for example, your spontaneous experience during the create, you can untick this box and hit save and it will show up during the create. So if, if it was a required field, I'd mark it as required field, if that's something that you want you start to fill out um, during the creation of a program, then that's what, that's what you normally do. But by default, the template, uh, we've pre-selected the fields already that, well, that would be meaningful enough for you to guys to get started with creating a new program. So at this stage, um, you can preview this, this draft program um, again it's pretty empty at the moment there's nothing in there so as you fill them out um all the information that gets filled in into here i'm just gonna uh put in some text text the moment that you edit any fields uh this box here turns to this nice pink the, uh, the owner pink Okay, and that will alert you if you have unsaved changes. So if you did try to leave and you have unsaved changes, uh, it will at least notify you so you don't lose any of your work. Because sometimes you could be working on filling out experiences and some of these um, evaluations and it, it does take a long time. And so you could fill out the feedback and you leave, go out for lunch and you come back and you may have accidentally click close, at least it will let you know to save. So in this case, I'm just going to hit save, save as draft. And what it does is, um, if I go to here, every time you save, it does create an audit. Okay, so if, for example, you've accidentally deleted uh, one of your categories or one of your experiences, you can always go back um, if you did save it. All right, so now the exciting part. This is the programming matrix. So adding in um, columns, we already know how to do. And now we can add in categories. Okay, your categories, the list in here, comes from your category list, categories and interest in here. Let's minimize this. Um, I don't know how to minimize that thing. This. So these are all your categories that you currently use now. All right, so now if I wanted to add a category, let's say I wanted to do creative play inside, I could put a description in. Um, 
and you can pick the background color. You can leave it as none if you don't want a background color. Well, let's pick green. Okay, so the limitation of the old um, program was that you're stuck with just one um, category. You're only allowed to pick one category of the same category. But in the new one, you can pick the same. So if you had a different um, experience, but it's for the same category type, you can do that now. Say in here, it's, it's still arts creative play inside, but now we're working with secondary colors. And pick that one later. Okay, so you can go on forever. You can add as many categories as you want. And when you hit save, your program summary, I won't display anything yet because we haven't done any experiences. So even if I refresh this, this will still be empty. Okay, so experiences. So each one of these box, you can link to an experience template. Okay, and an experience template you can create over here at the experience template. Um, that, and I'm gonna create a brand new one. Uh, with uh, experience, oh, this is active. And I'm just going to click on the learning experience template. But I'm just going to get rid of a few fields. Uh, say I don't want, I don't need goals. I don't need any, I don't need MTOP, but I'll keep my EYLF. And if I wanted to add in anything additional as well, for example, let me just add in the standard control. I'm going to add a star rating. And we'll call this one happiness. Hit save. So now I've created my own um, experience template, okay, which is called webinar experience. So if I go back to my view my program, edit uh, webinar program, webinary program. Webinary, that's a new word. All right, um, now we can add experiences to here, okay? So if, if you if your week that you're planning, let's say we're doing a weekly block and you already know that you're gonna do, what you're gonna do for each one of these days, you can apply a template to say the webinar experience and apply it to the entire row. So you don't have to do it one by one. So if I apply to row, you'll fill in webinar experience against each one of these days. But if you don't work that way, um, uh, you'd have to delete them if you've added them in by accident. So you can keep going with adding in experiences, removing experiences, doesn't matter. Um, if, if you do, do make a mistake and pick the wrong template. So normally if you wanted to create a different type of experiences, you'd probably wanna create an experience for having a group of children that you can select and one experience where it's only on a focused child. So that way you can uh, pinpoint exactly only one child when they're creating an experience. So that way uh, you could have that one-on-one -on -one, um, program against each one of your child in your center. So this case, I'm just gonna add one, just to this day, uh, webinar experience, apply that to here. And in the second one, instead of using the webinar experience, I'm going to pick my workshop experience. Apply that. Okay, so now I have two different templates that's going to be uh, displayed in here. So if I hit edit on this guy, this is what the template that you can fill out looks like. So I can type in this experience. Um, and that starts today and I'll pick Charlie Omar. if you don't pick a child at the moment the ch children is not marked as mandatory if you didn't pick a child the experience is classified as available to the entire room so if a parent was looking at this in the app they'd be able to look at they'll be able to see this experience because none of the 
children are tagged, it means that all the children can participate in this experience. But if I did tag Charlie and Omar, only they, their parents would be able to see this experience on the app. Um, tagging in my left, again, most of, all of these values, um, even though this, the title has been marked as the star as being mandatory, it doesn't need to be filled in, but it does stop you from marking as that's completed if you haven't filled them out in the end. So if I say EYLF, um, I don't know what the happiness yet because we haven't started experience. Um, sky. I'll just add some sample images. Save that. Okay, so now I've filled this out. Um, and with the table view, it, it may be, it, it, there's a different way of utilizing how to edit uh, your program. So you've got this table view where you can see all the different fields quite easily, different um, cells and experiences, but there's also this thing called the diary mode. The diary mode splits out your tables into all of their experiences. So that way you can see exactly what you filled in. So rather than go, being in table mode and having to click on the eye to view what's in it, you've got a condensed version of each one of these experiences and view it this way. So you can still do everything that you would normally do, like edit, um, add additional experiences within each one of these and edit the experience, okay? So anything that's mandatory, you'll notice here that it's saying that it's not filled in, that evaluation hasn't been filled in. So if I did try to complete it and hit save, it will tell me that not every, not um, this experience hasn't been completed yet, so you can't publish your program, okay? But if, if I publish the program, but I left this as not completed, that it's still valid, okay? Now, now my program is available in, um, as a published program. People will be able to see it um, on the app and it's editable on the app as well. Um, I'll show you how to edit that on the app as well um, a bit later. So now that I've filled in this, I can now go into my program summary, refresh this. And this is what it looks like. So we have two different um, categories. Only one experience has been filled in. So if I edit the next experience, which is this one here, I can say, uh, green, that's today. And I'm not gonna tag any child. I'll pick my UILF. All right, now that I've published this program, let's hit refresh. Now I have two different uh, experiences being displayed in my summer. So I'll keep going and just keep creating programs, uh, sorry, experiences against each one of these days. So for example, if this experience that you're working on here um, carries on over to day five, I can hit copy and paste it in here. And now I don't have to fill in most of the information in here because these experiences are con is a continuation. So if I wanted to create something brand new for day four, then all I do is click the plus and click on the experience type that you want to use. In this case here, I want to use webinar experience and fill this one out. Let's say it's a different group of children. Uh, let's say army, uh, so look in here. I'll pick Omar as well. Yeah, um, title will be. Uh, 
Uh, all right, hit save. So now I'm in my diary mode, three different types of experiences in here that I've filled in. So this one here is a, this one, day five is a copy of that guy. So I can edit this and say so this one is on the Friday. And it also includes another kit. Let's say it's Albert was included into this one. Um, yeah. Let's say. All right. Now, if I publish this, go to my summary, I'll be able to see all the different um, experiences that's been created. So you could keep going. You can have as many of these categories and columns as you want, and it will be rendered across uh, the page in threes. Okay, I, I thought that was the most optimal way to make uh, to fit as much as we can without uh, making this page so long, because it does get quite long when all of your um, uh, reflection and experiences have all been filled in, because the form itself gets quite big. So if you had filled in a lot of these, it would have been a lot of scrolling required if this were if each one of these experiences was this was taking up an entire row. So I'll up split it around the three so that way you can view it this way. And if you're if you are viewing it in the tablet, um, it does um, break down into their own different rows. So it's pretty responsive. All right. So at this stage. I have um, no completed experiences. So they are, to complete them, all you have to do is click on the yellow check. It'll say Mark Webinar experience is completed. I do want that. Um, if I hit OK, it'll tell me that not all the mandatory fields are filled in. So it won't, it won't let me until I edit and put in an evaluation. Say, oh. Save. Oh, I can mark this guy as completed. Okay, and I will also mark. I'll mark by all of them as completed, so that way we can see what it looks like on the app. Um, So hard trying to figure out what to put into this evaluation without copying and pasting. All right, in red. It's going to edit this and put in. And last one. Mm. Okay, so I'll mark this one as completed and publish that. So completing, I uh, didn't complete this one. Okay, I'll leave that as not completed. If you've added experiences, it will automatically calculate how many items there are or experiences there are inside each one of these cells and calculate the completion rate of each one of your um, categories. And in this case, here, since I've only had one and I've completed it, it's marked as 100% complete. And in the program itself, it will do exactly the same. It'll calculate how many experiences there are in total of the program. That's actually a valid experience. And it will calculate the completion rate of your entire program. So if I was to mark this one as completed, 
you publish, this should now be, the whole program is now 100% complete. But it, it just, it doesn't mean that you've completed the entire thing. You could be still at day five and you've still got a few more days left and you can just add experiences as you go along or you can just copy and paste um, experiences that are similar. But if you had something completely different, you can build an experience template that's uh, that doesn't uh, match what you already have here. Just create them from in here and it will show up in your list. So if my program was, um, I'm, I'm happy with what's happening with day six, uh, I wanna create posts against each one of these experiences. Okay, so in the program itself, when you're editing, there's a, a button up here on the top right, you can add a post, a link post against the in, entire program. So if you're doing an overall post, I'm um, just gonna call this overall post webinar program. That's fun. I'm not taking any children, it's for everyone. And I'm just gonna hit add post. So this is just a, your stock standard post that you would create. So that's the one that we've created in here. So now if I go to my program, in our program, that post will be linked to that program automatically, which, which is something that you kind of already have now where you create a new post, there's a drop down where you pick a program. Um, it just, it's the linking is all done for you by just clicking on that button. So now we'll, we also have the ability to create posts against each one of these experiences. So for example, in here, you wanted to capture um, what was happening throughout the day, all, both of these children were painting something in blue, but uh, something else happened, okay? So they, you want, and you wanted to capture that as the um, educator for this day. Say, okay, Omar was having so much fun today um, that you found, that you've served something completely different to what you were expecting for that experience for that day. So in this case, I can create either a portfolio or I could add, a learning doc. So in this guy, I'm just going to create a learning doc. It automatically links everything to the program and the children that that belongs to that experience. So now I can just say in here, um, um, and observation values today. Okay, I'll just leave it as oh, missed something. Uh. All right, so now we've created a learning doc that is linked to this experience. So if we were looking at um, previewing this, and going to the bottom, you'll notice that there's now two posts against it. But what you have is the ability to click on this guy. That filters your post to only that experience. So if you had 20 posts, you'd be able to filter on, okay, I just want to see all the posts, uh, whether they're learning doc or just a standard post against each any of these experiences, you'd be able to do that. So if you wanted to look at all experiences, this will display all of your posts. But if you're just looking at day six painting with blue, okay, this is the one that we just created. Okay, so now, um, yeah, you've got that ability to link and the parents see that as well. So if, um, if they log onto the app, they'd be able to see their experiences on the app and in the post they'd be able to filter it down to the program so at least there, there's that connection that um ability them for, to see that their, their child actually participated in that specific experience um during that day because you could have multiple experiences during this day and if omar was tagged um at least they'll know which one of them he participated in all right um 
I think uh, I've taken up quite a lot uh, of time. I just want to quickly go through the application on what the parents see, and then we'll finish off from there. Uh, there is uh, a lot more to go on, but I'll be running a training, two training sessions next month um, to go through uh, the application in a lot more detail. All right, so I'm logged in as uh, Francesco, which is Omar's dad. If I click on the webinar program as a parent, I'll be able to see in here uh, all of the experiences that I'm always tagged in. So it's pretty much he's tagged in all of them. So I'm able as a parent, I'm able to put in the feedback against the overall program and say, this is such a program. Save, and they can also give feedback against each one of these um, experiences. Save. So now. Um, we have this full loop now of trying to create a program and leading that back to the parent and them giving feedback, not only just to the program itself, but to you guys uh, when you guys are creating each one of these experiences. So when you're viewing the actual program in here, you'd be able to see all the different feedback that um, the parents have given for each, whether it's an experience level or at the overall program level. Okay, that, that, that's all I wanted to really go through today because uh, otherwise we'll be here for another couple of hours because these are all pretty exciting stuff and there's so many things that you can customize that um, probably won't, uh, you, you probably wouldn't want to be sitting here at the moment looking at all of them. So I'll probably stop there. Um, Jen, is there anything you want to add? Um, not at the moment. We do have a few questions and things. Um, yep. So we can yeah, just, let's do a 10-15 uh, minutes of QA. Um, so yeah, everyone feel free to add your questions. We've got a couple of questions from earlier as well. So um, let me just pull this up here. Um, so question from Guy, he's saying, can they, can they create their program categories and adjust them progressively throughout the week? What does that mean? So the program category, so I'm assuming yep. on the program matrix. Um, yeah, you add more categories. And adjust them progressively through the week. So they, I think they program, um, Guy, are you able to maybe expand, expand your extend your question a little bit or expand on it a little bit? I think my understanding of that, Jen, is that um, they wanted to just be able to add either add more categories or remove them as they're going through. Yeah, the week. for sure. You, you probably wouldn't want to remove. If you did remove, there's nothing wrong with removing, but it will remove all your experiences if you've captured quite a lot. Okay, but the post and every all the observations that you've done throughout that day uh would still apply will still be saved but the only thing you'd lose is their parents um if it is an important experience that you've just deleted it, it, the parents won't be able to see it okay uh but you can progressively add categories throughout you know like here this program here is 100 completed but if i wanted to add another category in here and uh, let's say made of week and add in for, for day one, for example, and, uh, you, you can do that. So there's there's nothing stopping you from adding it and making, even though it's 100% completed, the system will readjust itself to say that uh, it's now down to 90% uh, completed if you've added a new experience. So you could have a lot of some of these spaces blank because there's no experiences that have occurred for that day for this specific category. So they all don't need to be filled in. They can just be left open. And it will be displayed in the diary view. So you can still click and add them. 
uh, there's nothing stopping you from adding in as many categories as you want throughout the, life, the lifetime of this program. Cool, thanks. Um, okay, so the next question we have is from Rista. She's saying that in the experience template, are there any limits on the images we can attach? Is it similar to what we've got now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question from Haley. Is it possible to see which educator has made the evaluation on an activity only because they have multiple educators adding evaluations? Um, so they would like to be able to see because sometimes they do like three evaluations or so um, throughout the day with by different educators. For the same experience. For the same experience. Mm. Is that something that we can have a look at possibly? Yeah, we could. So it could be one too many staff that could be evaluating it? Yep. Okay. I've got to have a look at that. All right. Awesome. Um, Kirsty Lee is saying uh, she's asking about how um, the current program, it is automatically posted to the timeline. So um, like the Monday to Friday programs in posts. Yep. How will that work now? <laughs> Um, that part uh, I have not nailed down yet because I know that issue that was brought up to me last week because uh, since the program is now ever changing we want to make sure that it, it keeps up into the timeline if it does get updated so if you did complete this on Monday and on Thursday you actually made an adjustment to it we want to be able to push that um, up higher in the timeline again at this stage, we can't. So we're, what we're hoping to do is as you publish the program, every time that you do hit publish, it will um, add, uh, move the existing post that was created back up into the top of the timeline or even pin it. All right. Um, next one we've got from Jody. Um, we do have a lot of real-time planning and we'll add to the program once published. Will parents be able to see the blank boxes and then see the updates when they are made by educators? Yeah, parents don't see the blank boxes, but only the ones that you've updated. So, for example, in here, I've added a completely new one. The parent won't be able to see this yet unless I filled it in. Okay, so if you're still at the planning stage and you hit publish, but you haven't really physically clicked on the edit, pick the children or even put a title in, then the parent won't see this picture. Yeah, sure. But the moment that you do fill it in and pick a child or left it without any children, the experience will be displayed to all the parents. Only if it's been marked as completed. So you can still go on for the rest of the, the day filling it in even if you haven't done um, any photographs yet, you can still add them in throughout the day. The moment that you do hit that mark is completed, uh, it will be displayed to the parent. I've got a couple of questions in regards to the um, parent posting in that. We've got, can we choose it for, uh, can we choose for it not to be published to the timeline? Uh, also, uh, so will parents get notification when we publish our weekly program? Our notification, yep. The parents will get one if their children's if their children's tag or if the part of the experience itself is for the whole entire room, they'll get a uh, notification. In terms of photos not being displayed, uh, if you're editing an experience. Oh, no. Um, the question was in regards to the actual experience being posted to the timeline. So one of the similar questions. Uh, the, the experience doesn't get posted into the timeline. It's the po You can create post against an experience, which creates an actual, a real post. So ah, okay. if you've added photos against this, like this one here, they don't get displayed in the timeline. The experience itself doesn't get displayed in the timeline. But it does get displayed only in the app, the, the view that the parent get in the app. So they'll get to see it here, which is only visible to them because if their child is tagged for this experience, it's only going to be available to them. So it won't be available publicly in the post. 
Um, okay, so I've got one. Currently, families can see all from Linda. Uh, yeah, currently, families can see all programs from all rooms. Can this be restricted just for the rooms their child children are in? Uh, yes, we're working with the mobile devs uh, to filter it down to display only programs that their child belongs in, or if their children's tagged. So, but th this um, will only work for the custom programs because the old design um, doesn't have children tags against them, only the room IDs. So it won't work for the old old version. Hope yep. that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's good. Um, okay, so I've got a question here. When adding a follow-up to an observational post, can we have it added directly to the program or do we still need to do that manually? Sorry, say that again. So when adding a follow-up to an observation or post, can we have it added directly to the program or do we need to still do that manually? Yeah, at the moment, it's still manually. We are working at um, adding a, a, the follow-up um, in phase two of custom programming. So we're still trying to figure out the best way to build it into the actual program view. Um, yeah, we've had a couple of... Um, discussions about that yes yeah. um okay i've got one here is there um is there any chance to quickly run through the reporting process identifying children in the planned experiences and evaluations also can children be tagged to evaluations um if you wanted to have children tagged, um, again, it depends on how you build out your templates. Uh, it could be another feature that we could build into the actual evaluation, so it's not an actual field that you fill in. So what we could actually introduce is, again, there's evaluation for staff, each individual staff, and also evaluation for each individual child. So it's definitely something we could add in. But at this stage, this is currently what we have, uh, but we can extend that to phase two. I don't have a question, but I have some good feedback I wanted to share with everyone. This yes, all looks please. so, so good. I appreciate all the time and effort that this would have taken to get to this point. Thank you for being so responsive to service um, and educated needs. Um, there's just a couple more here. Um, is there an ability to link a PDF document to an overview plan that can be linked into the plan as a reference? Yeah, you can. Um, in the actual programming template, let's say in our webinar program, just add a file upload. Uh, one of these ones. So just drop one of these in. Um, they, Reference PDF. So now they'd be able to upload a file into this program when they create it. So if I hit save, view my webinar program, now I can drop a PDF in here. And they'll be able to view that in the summary. Does that answer it, Jen? Yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, we focus um, we focus on inquiry based learning with children and sit these can often stay the same over weeks. So would that category be able to add the same category more than once because at the moment we add the experiences yes. in the same one however this can change often. Yeah yeah you can. So with um, what we've done here, well we had the same category added twice. So we had one where it's exactly the same category, but two different type of experiences where they're working with primary colors and the secondary colors for the second one. Is that, um, is that right, Jen? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Um, we've got a question here from Melissa. Uh, can you explain the experience template further? How is this streamlined for every experience for every age group? Experiences can be unlimited. Um, I think I'll answer that one. So yep. I guess it's a lot to take in today because there's a it's a new um, you know platform that we're showing you. Jeremy is planning on having uh, two more 
um, once it actually goes live to have training sessions so you can have a play with it while attending the training session as well and I'll also be um, after we've done all the training sessions I will add that to my regular fortnightly programming training as well um, so if you do have any questions that is specific to your service um, I can answer those questions in those um, training sessions as well so um, I mean in terms of the experience template it can be whatever you need it to be as well so when you do the experience template it's just those fields that you would like to um, you know show what you're planning for that day for that learning experience so again it can be um, as you said uh, it, Melissa it's experiences can be unlimited and we've done it so that it's customizable for how you program at your service does that answer that question guys <laughs> Um, so I've got, how long do you want to stay on, Jeremy, to answer some questions? Uh, we'll got do three, three more minutes. We don't want to hold everyone back. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so. Uh, Ask questions, guys. Get them in now. Can we choose it? Yep, okay. Um, I'm just going to scroll through. Um, I think this question was answered earlier. So if we just choose to tag the room in the program and not tag children in the experiences, will parents still be able to see all the program experiences? Yes, if the, there's no children tagged. So it will only be displayed to all the children in that room. Um, if you tag a child in an experience, does that mean that only those parents can see? Yes, that's right. Yes. Um, what if you want all families to see it but want to tag a child as a uh, focused child? How do you do that? I think that one, again, is answered already. If you tag that child, only that parent of that child will be able to see. Yeah. Um, do parents see that evaluation? No. I think that's... Uh, I think that's all the questions we've got at the moment now. Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's it. Last questions, and we'll um, finish up there. But we'll we'll definitely send email communication to everyone once it goes live, um, and then we'll also tee in a time that uh, two sessions actually one week. Is that right? Uh, Jeremy? Yes. Yeah, I'll do it in the same week, a Tuesday and a Thursday. Uh, just. Just so that if anyone misses the Tuesday, they've got another day to catch up on. Yeah. Go to both. And all these, um, the all these uh, training sessions and everything will be available on our YouTube as well. So, uh, if you did miss the beginning, definitely. Uh, have a look at um, our YouTube channel and everything. But thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate all the feedback that um, you have given us as well. And we do try to <laughs> get as much and fit as much as we possibly can um, to reflect uh, what you guys need as well. So uh, thanks for all your support and your feedback. So yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Thanks, thanks, thanks to you to Joan and uh, Jeremy for your huge contribution to this. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. everyone for joining. Thank you.